Okay, the last thing in the bonding part of this unit we're going to talk about is Lewis structures. Pause me real quick and make sure you write down the rules and then we're going to apply them all. Notice there are uh, several exceptions. The reason hydrogen only takes two electrons is because it's an energy level one, so it can only have a max of two electrons. Aluminum, um, everything past aluminum, and when I say everything past aluminum, I mean your nonmetals or metalloids. can hold more than 8 because past aluminum you have your D and F orbitals available to them to store extra electrons and boron for whatever reason can be happy with only 6 so let's get started with examples xenon hexafluoride xenon, he xenon brings 8 electrons it has 8 valence electrons each fluorine has seven. You've got six of those, so that's 42 electrons. That means that we can have that we're going to be have working with 50 electrons. Put the first thing listed in the middle, and draw everything else around it. We won't give y'all any of the exceptions where the things around it are not going to be in the middle, or, or where there'll be any type of connections between. Things are listed second or third in a problem. The only time that the first thing does not go in the middle is when it's hydrogen. So, so far we have used 12 electrons. So we have 50 to work with. We've used 12. So we got 38 electrons. They're going to be non-bonding electrons. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. We've used 36 electrons around our fluorine. we got two left over, so they just go on the middle thing. This, whatever is left over, put on the middle. Once you've made the outside have eight, then you worry about what's in the middle. Because of this lone pair, that means we have a dipole-dipole interaction between molecules of xenon hexafluoride. Sulfur dioxide, each sulfur has six electrons. So does oxygen, but you got two of those, so that's 12. So we have 18 electrons. The first thing goes in the middle and everything else goes outside. So we've got 14 electrons left. We're going to put them around starting with the oxygens. So each of our oxygens have eight electrons around it. So far, we've only used 16 total electrons, so we're going to put the two in the middle for sulfur. But notice that sulfur only has six electrons. So what happens is one of the electron pairs off of an oxygen will go in to form a double bond between one of the socks, between the sulfur and one oxygen. It doesn't matter which side you would put that double bond on, just to make sure that everyone has eight. We still have a lone pair of electrons up here on your metal atom, so it is also a dipole-dipole. Ammonia is NH3. Each nitrogen has five electrons. You have three hydrogens, each with one, so you have a total of three, so there are eight electrons to work with. First thing goes in the middle, and then everything else is around it. So far we've used six electrons, so we're going to seven, eight. So hydrogens are all happy, they all have two around them. Nitrogen has eight, so we're done with our structure. Now this looks like a dipole-dipole because it does have the lone pair of electrons, but remember hydrogen bonding is when you have a hydrogen attached to a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, since chemistry is on. Uh -huh. And so, and here we have a hydrogen bonding, that stronger hydrogen bond that we talked about in intermolecular forces. Three more examples. We have nitrite, which is one of your polyatomic ions that you're going to be learning about very, very soon. It is NO2 with a one negative. That one negative means it's got an extra, um, extra electron. Well, nitrogen, again, has five valence electrons. You have two oxygens, each of six valence electrons for a total of 12, plus your negative charge. So we have 18 electrons to work with. 
nitrogen goes in the middle and our oxygens come off like that and then we um, start counting again we've got used four so far so we've got 14 more to go so we've used 16 again this is very similar to what we just did with this sulfur uh, dioxide one of the oxygens is going to move its electron pair into a double bond and then the last thing that you have to do on these is you have to put a bracket around it and say, hey, this one has an extra electron from what you see on the um, periodic table. So this is how you represent your various um, ions, when you have extra electrons or less electrons or whatever. You put them in brackets and put whatever that charge is. Again, you've got a lone pair of electrons on your center atom, so you've got a dipole going on. Phosphorus trihydride. You have phosphorus has five valence electrons. Hydrogen, there's three hydrogens for a total of three electrons, so we have eight electrons. First thing goes in the middle, putting our hydrogens around. We have a lone pair of electrons on our phosphorus, so this is also a dipole. And then finally we have oxygen. There are two oxygens, so we have a total of 12 electrons to work with. Notice oxygen, when oxygen is by itself, it always comes in pairs. So there's always two of them. There are seven elements that are like that, and we'll talk about that when we get into our naming and writing formulas and balancing equations section of um, the year. So you put the, you, in this case, you just bond them up together. So far we've used two electrons, so there's 10 electrons left. Well, you can tell right away that only 10 electrons left. Somebody's not going to have, so if 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, one of the oxygens does not have a um, 8 electrons around it. So what happens is one pair goes as a double bond. Here is a hint on some of these things. Hydrogen, oh, let's finish up. This is a um, dispersion because there's no, it's, a, it's, it's symmetrical around the element. So that's another way of thinking about it. Is it symmetrical? If it's symmetrical, then it's dispersion. If it's asymmetrical, something is different, then it's probably dipole, dipole. But to um, go back to number of bonds and everything else, hydrogen and your halogens only have one bond. Actually, I'm going to make a new slide of this. Let me see how to do that. Oh, here we go. So when you're looking at your number of bonds, oops, can't write in white anymore. Okay, number of bonds. Hydrogen and your halogens. Well, typically only have, well, no, they will be one bond. They'll, they won't double bond. Um, they're they're going to have themselves plus whatever they're attached to, and that's all the bonds that you're going to have. Your oxygen group typically has to have two bonds. Your nitrogen group will typically have three bonds and carbon group will typically have four bonds. So when you're trying to figure out if you've done your structure correctly, this is a general idea of what, how many bonds you're going to be looking for. Obviously, there on previous examples, oxygen, some of them had two bonds and some of them only had one. So that there are exceptions to the rules that you want to try and look at um, making sure that they generally follow this generic um, rule. We'll see you next week.